Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about CNC cam strategies for building guitars. Now, I'm not going to get into specific details about the different cam strategies that I use when I carve a guitar, you know, a body, neck, and fretboard. That's going to be something I'll talk about in a future episode. Today, what I wanted to talk about was everything that I have learned about cam strategies since I upgraded to the X-Carve Pro. And I think that this is information that's going to be useful, especially to those of you out there who are thinking about adding CNC technology to your workshop. You're probably looking at a bunch of different machines and are trying to decide which would work best for you. Now, in most cases, people will make that decision based on the price of the machine. And you can do that, certainly, and you should, you know, obviously consider the price. But what's more important is the capabilities of the machine that you're looking at. Because if that machine is not going to be able to do what you're hoping it'll do, you've wasted some money. So hopefully with this episode, you will come to understand better the sort of things that you need to consider when selecting a CNC machine. Now, one of the things that I learned about when I made this upgrade from my previous machine to the X-Carve Pro is that uh, cam strategy can really change when you move from a, or move to a more capable machine like the X-Carve Pro. And I think the best way to understand that is for me to kind of walk you through an example of what I learned. And we'll start by uh, examining my previous CNC machine. That machine was one that I designed and built myself, and it makes use of Acme lead screws and Delrin anti-backlash nuts for linear motion. Now, the advantage of using that uh, combination is it's affordable. You can build a very capable CNC machine without spending a huge amount of money. And if that's something you're considering and are interested in, you can head over to eGuitarPlans.com and purchase my assembly manual for that machine. However, as I was using that machine, I began to realize that the cam strategies that I wanted to use were not necessarily capable with that, with that machine. And the reason was the disadvantage of using Acme lead screws and Delrin uh, uh, anti-backlash nuts. While they're more affordable, they do require a lot more power to move your different axes. So uh, in order to move the gantry on the y-axis as well as your spindle on the x and z axis takes some pretty strong stepper motors and that's because the acme lead screw and the delrin anti-backlash nuts produce a lot of friction a great deal more friction than ball screws however ball screws are also much more expensive as a result i couldn't achieve the feeds and speeds and depth of cut that I was hoping I could achieve. Now, what determines feed and speed and depth of cut? Well, it's really the bits that you use. And typically the bit that I use the most often when I'm carving guitar parts, uh, primarily bodies and necks, is a quarter inch diameter solid carbide two flute spiral bit. And I use both up cut and down cut bits depending on uh, the specific operation and what I need to achieve. Uh, the up cut and the down cut uh, basically have the same specifications. But with these bits, you have a specific feed and speed rate that you uh, are in, supposed to use with the bit, as well as a specific depth of cut. 
and you need to, to set your machine to operate within those parameters in order to extend the life of your bit to keep it sharp and not uh, getting dull as well as to achieve the best possible finish in the parts that you're cutting out. Well, with my old machine, because of the amount of friction that's involved with the Acme lead screws and the Delrin uh, anti-backlash nuts, I could only achieve a feed rate of about 100 inches per minute with this bit and a depth of cut uh, typically between 0 0.06 and 0 0.08 inches depending on the hardness of the material that I was carving into. And if I did the math uh, for this uh, specific type of bit, I learned that I should be able to achieve a feed rate of about uh, between 128 inches per minute and 192 inches per minute. And that's based on a depth of cut that's equal to the diameter of the bit. So it's a quarter inch diameter bit, the depth of cut should be a quarter of an inch deep. Well, that's significantly faster and deeper than what I was uh, able to achieve with my previous machine. As a result, when I would carve, for example, a guitar body, with my old machine, it was taking between four and a half and five hours to cut out the body. I was okay with that because I'm not in a mass production environment. I'm just building two or three guitars at a time. So I, you know, I can afford to spend four and a half to five hours watching my machine carve out a body. However, I knew that because I wasn't able to uh, achieve the feeds and speeds and depth of cut that the bit is designed for, I was probably not cutting as efficiently as possible. So, I knew that when I upgraded to the X-Carve Pro, I was going to be able to achieve this. And what I did was, before I got the X-Carve Pro, is I, I, took a, I did the math. I took a look at the different bits that I was using, and I calculated what the ideal feeds and speeds and depth of cut should be. Now, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below to a website. It's, it's on the Onsred website and it includes all the information you need to perform the different math formulas for different types of materials and different bits in order to calculate what your feed and speeds and depth of cut should be. And with the old machine, I just wasn't able to achieve that kind of speed. My uh, stepper motors, when I tried to push it faster and deeper, they just didn't like it. There was just too much friction in the Acme lead screws and the Delrin anti-backlash nuts to allow for that. But I knew with this new machine I was going to be able to do that. In fact, I contacted Inventables before I pulled the trigger on this machine and I asked them, can I achieve those kind of feeds and speeds and depth of cut? And they assured me that they could, that they had actually tested it extensively to make sure that the machine could do that. So I went ahead and got the machine, got it set up, and as it turns out, when I carved my first guitar body, instead of it taking four and a half to five hours, it took uh, roughly between an hour and a half and two hours to cut it out. And I was using the same cam strategies that I was using with my previous machine. I just increased the feed rate and the depth of cut. Well, obviously I was pretty happy with that. I mean, I'm saving significant time just by upgrading to this machine. But something else occurred to me. Because of the time it took for my previous machine to cut out a guitar body, I had to keep my cam strategy pretty simple. Now, when I say cam strategy, uh, CAM is spelled C-A-M, and that is an acronym for computer-aided manufacturing. That is the step that comes after you've designed the part that you're going to be carving. In CAM, what you're doing is you're telling the software what bits you're going to use, and then you're deciding on the type of tool paths that you're going to use to carve out that part. Then, this, the software, once you're satisfied with your toolpath uh, selection, the software can spit out the G-code that your computer will send to the controller on the CNC machine to carve out the part. Well, one of the things that I had learned was 
Because this machine could run so much faster, I could start looking at more sophisticated and advanced cam strategies. Typically, cam strategies will involve two different types of cuts. The first is a rough cut, which hogs out most of the wood, and then the second is a finishing cut, which smooths out the surface and removes the tool marks that were left by the roughing cut. And my previous machine, because I had to keep things simple in order to try to reduce the time that it takes to carve a part, I had to keep my strategies really basic and simple. So I had a simple rough cut, but I had an even simpler uh, parallel finishing carve. And the result was when the body would come off the CNC machine, it looked pretty good. I, I mean, I was happy with it. However, I noticed that the surface quality was inconsistent. In some areas, it was really nice and smooth, and in other areas, you could still see the uh, terraced stair-stepping that's generated during the rough carving process. And I knew the only way to eliminate that, to make this, the entire surface consistently smooth, was to use a much more elaborate and sophisticated finishing strategy. The problem was with my old machine, that would extend out the time it took to carve the part. So instead of you know four and a half to five hours, it was gonna take you know more like six hours to carve a guitar body. And that was just getting a little bit too long for me. So I just couldn't do that level of uh, finishing. And as a result, I had to spend more time after the part was cut out, sanding the surface to get it ready for the application of whatever type of finish I was planning to use. Now with CNC, theoretically, you should be able to achieve a surface finish that is ready for, for the application of your finish. You really shouldn't have to do much sanding. In fact, I'm still doing some sanding only because I feel like it's part of the process that I have to do. I haven't been able to let go of that yet. But I think that as I move forward uh, and, and fully develop my cam strategies with this new machine, I should be able to eliminate that whole step. And that will save a significant amount of time. So what I did was I, I took the existing cam strategies that I was using, and I pretty much chucked them out the window, and I redid the cam strategies based on what this machine is capable of. As a result, I can do my rough carves with my quarter inch bit at about 150 inches per minute with a depth of cut of a quarter inch deep. And that, you know, obviously is going to save tremendous amount of time. But with respect to the finishing carves, I'm now able to, to incorporate some much more sophisticated uh, finishing strategies using different types of bits. And I'll talk about those in a future episode when I go into more detail about my cam strategies. But what that's done is that it has allowed me to carve out a guitar body that is basically ready for finish in an hour and a half to two hours with almost no sanding whatsoever. So the time savings is dramatic. And the reason why I'm bringing all this up, especially to those of you who are considering getting into CNC, is that I think when it comes to selecting a machine, what you have to do is you have to make sure that that machine is going to be able to operate within the theoretical specifications of the bits that you're using. So what you would want to do is decide what kind of bits you're going to use when you're carving your bodies and necks and fretboards. And then you're going to want to do the math to see what the feeds and speeds, depth of cut and all that should be. Then you want to ask the manufacturer of the CNC machines that you're considering if those machines are capable of running within those specifications. If they can't do it, you're either going to have to dial back your expectations of what your machine is going to be capable of, or you're going to have to reevaluate your budget and consider spending a little bit more for a more capable machine. The last thing I would want you to do is to buy a machine that is um, marketed as a CNC machine, but maybe isn't as capable as you would think the machine should be. And, you know, once it's in your shop and you're using it, you know, that's the decision has been made and you, you're going to have to live with whatever that decision is. But if you can arm yourself with enough information beforehand, 
you may find yourself able to purchase a machine for an affordable price that has all the capabilities that you need. And knowing how fast that machine can carve and uh, the depth of cut that it can achieve is, I think, a really important factor in determining which machine you're going to buy. And kind of as a rule of thumb, I would say if the machine has linear motion that is controlled with belts and V-wheels, you're probably not going to be able to run at the speeds and, and depth of cut that the bits are, you know, especially the quarter inch bits are capable of. Uh, you would have to dial it back quite a bit. And remember, when you start to reduce the speed, you increase the chance of the bit rubbing the wood, which dulls the bit out faster. So, you know, take that into consideration as well. If the machine has Acme lead screws and Delrin anti-backlash nuts, which is really more of a DIY build-it-yourself type solution, uh, you might be able to increase the speeds a little bit, but you're still probably not going to be able to achieve what these bits are capable of. And if the machine has ball screws and some pretty decent uh, NEMA 23 or larger stepper motors and a true uh, VFD controlled spindle, at least 1.5 kilowatts or larger, then you probably will be able to achieve what these bits are designed to, to do as far as feeds and speeds and depth of cut. So I hope that this information will help you in making the right decision for whatever CNC machine that you might be considering for your shop. Uh, at any rate, if this video is helpful to you, please consider giving me a, a thumbs up. And if you don't already subscribe but like videos on building guitars, especially building guitars with CNC technology, click the subscribe button. And if you want to show my channel some support, head over to eGuitar Plans, purchase a plan. And even if you don't make the plan that you purchase, just know you're helping to support this channel and keep it running. Uh, and if you don't want a plan, you can always head over to my merch shop. Um, I've got a shelf down below. You can purchase some different t-shirts and that sort of thing. And if you can't see that shelf, there'll be a link in the description as well. Uh, but you can show your support that way. And until the next episode, take care and stay safe and I'll see you soon.